In the first part of this lecture, we are going to improve the to-do forms appearance with Swift UI. As you can see, with some handy modifiers, we can create a professional-looking user interface. In the second part of this tutorial, we are going to create a new add button with a pulsating animation on the first screen. Alright, without further ado, open the add to-do file and navigate to the beginning of the form view. Let's face it, the default UI design provided by the operating system is quite plain, which is totally ok, since we can use it as a starter point. Let's start to make this design better than its existing look, shall we? First, we will get rid of the forms view because we don't want to display the separators and the buttons design that it provides us. Having said that, replace the form view with a new vStack as I show you. vStack Alignment Leading Spacing 20 Then add the following modifiers to it as well. New comment End of vStack Padding Horizontal Padding Vertical 30 Super! As you can notice in the preview, the separators are gone already. Now we are going to improve the UI of the text field by adding the following modifiers to it. Padding Background Color UI color Tertiary system field Corner radius 9 Font System Size 24 Weight Bold Design Default Whoa, whoa, whoa! Hold on a sec, you may say. Where does this tertiary system feel color came from? As you know, Apple's iOS operating system provides us many UI components with the default design system. This default design system changes from time to time when Apple decides to refine or totally refresh the whole look and feel or only just some parts of it in some cases of the next big iOS release. However, one thing is sure about this design system. Its official name is Human Interface Guidelines and Apple designed it not only for iOS but all of its platforms such as macOS, watchOS and tvOS. If you want to be a well-rounded iOS or macOS app developer then you should be familiar with these design guidelines. Please visit Apple's official website at httpsdeveloper.apple.com slash design slash human dash interface dash guidelines. Web address and select the iOS documentation from the available options on the page. By doing that, you will notice the table of the contents on the left sidebar. Now click on the visual design main topic and read all of the submenus there. I would like to highlight two subtopics from the visual design. These topics are the color and the dark mode. The documentation of these topics is not only informative but I would say quite crucial if you want to create a modern and professional app design. For example, in the color section you can gather helpful information about the default color system. Next, from the dark mode documentation you can learn how these default colors adopt the light and the dark appearances. Finally, this tertiary system field is one of these operating system level color assets that we are using for the background of the text field. I hope that this short sidetrack was useful to you and I highly encourage you to get be familiar with these human interface guidelines as soon as possible. I can talk it more about for countless hours, but we need to get back to the track. Let's continue the app development with designing the save button, shall we? Navigate to the if conditional statement and comment out the print function inside the button. We don't need it anymore. Next, go down to the text view with the save string and enter the following modifiers to it. 
font system size 24 weight bold design default padding frame min width 0 max width infinity background color blue corner radius 9 foreground color color white this code is quite self-explanatory, in my opinion. First, we set the same size and weight to the front as we did previously for the text field. With this, we kept the design language consistent. After that, by using the infinity frame setting for the width of the button, we achieved to expand it horizontally. These white horizontal buttons are quite popular nowadays in app design. Then we added a temporary blue color background with rounded corners and white foreground color to the button. And that's it. We have just finished designing the input view of the to-do app. What do you think about it? It's definitely better than the previous plain stock user interface design, isn't it? Good job so far. Now it's time to create a new add button. Open the Content View file and navigate to the existing Add button on the navigation bar. In the upcoming lecture, we will replace it, but now we only need is to copy the sheet modifier inside it. Let's do it right now. After copying the sheet to the clipboard, scroll down to the end of the Z stack and paste it there. The reasoning behind it is this sheet will be triggered by the new add button and the previous one will be replaced when we start developing a new settings view. Alright, enough talking. Let's get down to the business. First, let's create a new overlay for the new add button. Overlay. This will align the button to the bottom right corner on the screen. Next, we need to create the actual button inside this overlay modifier. Enter the following code. Button. Action. Self. Showing add to do view. Toggle. Image. System name. Plus. Dot. Circle. Dot. Fill. Resizable. Scale to fit. Background. Circle. Fill. Color. Color base. Frame. Width. 48. Height. 48. Alignment. Center. Super! Not bad at all! Did you notice that background with a circle shape inside it? We need this one because the plus sign in the symbol is cut out from the shape. The color of this circle always adapts to the light and the dark appearances accordingly. With these tiny details our add button looks much better now. But before we align this button to the corner, then we need to embed it into a new Z stack since the final button consists of two parts. Let's create a new V stack and rename it to Z stack as I show you. Z stack. New comment. End of Z stack. Now we are able to align this container to the corner with the following parameter to the overlay. Comma, alignment, bottom trailing. As you notice, this will align the Z stack container to the bottom right on the screen above the safe area. The only thing we need to do is to add some paddings to it. Enter, padding, bottom, 15. 
padding, trailing, 15. Great, the design of the button gets better and better. It's time to finish it by adding a group of circles below it that we are going to animate shortly after. Let's create a new group with two circles in the Z stack. Group Circle Fill Color Blue Opacity 0.2 Frame Width 68 Height 68 Alignment Center Circle Fill Color Blue Opacity 0.15 Frame Width 88 Height 88 Alignment Center As you might notice, each circle below the add symbol is slightly bigger than the other one. The transparent background is a perfect match for the pulsating animation that we are going to develop right now. Because we always need to store the state of the animation, therefore go back to the top of the file and let's create a new property for it. Enter the following code. Add state, private, var, animating button. Bool equals false. Super! Now jump back to the group of circles and modify their opposites as I show you. Modify the opacity of the first circle. Opacity. Self. Animating button. Question mark. 0.2. Column. 0. Then the second circle. Opacity. Self. Animating button. Question mark. 0.15. Column. 0. Great! This will change the opacity value of the circles from total transparency to their original values. Next we are going to add a new scale effect to these circles as well. Add this to the first circle. Scale effect Self Animating button Question mark 1 Column 0 then add the same modifier to the second circle as well. Scale effect Self Animating button Question mark 1 Column 0 So far, so good. Now we need to declare precisely what kind of animation we want to run continuously. Add this animation modifier to the group itself. Animation. Animation. Ease in, out. Duration. 2. Repeat forever. Auto reverses. True. This piece of code will run and ease in and out animation slowly and repeatedly forward and backward. With the combination of the opacity and scale effect, this will create a custom pulsate animation. Just one more thing before we finish this tutorial. We need to decide when to run this animation. As many times before, we choose to run it when it's appearing on the screen. Having said that, add a new onAppear modifier to the button as I show you. New comment, end of button. onAppear. Perform. Self. Animating button. Toggle. It's done. I am pretty sure that you are already eager to test this to do app on your device or in the simulator. Let's do it together. Build and run the project.
And there it is. After the launch screen, there is our newly created and animated Add New Task button on the first screen. Its main goal is to grab the user's attention to it. What about the input form? It's quite impressive, isn't it? Do you like it? I hope so. We can input new tasks in the well-designed text field and save them with the horizontally flexible button to the local storage using core data. Now let's test the to-do app in the dark mode as well. Go back to Xcode and click on the Environment Overrides button at the bottom of the editor. Now change the interface style from light to dark and play with the to-do app a little bit. Pay attention to the adaptive colors of the text field or the add button. The design of this to-do app is much, much better now than it was before we started this lecture, and I am so glad that I could show you why designing a user interface is so important. But hey, we are not done yet. In the following lectures, we are going to develop new features for this to-do application. Having said that, see you in the next class.